Hello everyone, the Army of Otters here, and welcome back to the Unexplored Mojave. Today we're going to be looking at Hopeville, which is the first town that you encounter in the Lonesome Road DLC. Now I'm very excited for this video because Lonesome Road is my favorite DLC in Fallout New Vegas. I really love Ulysses as a villain, and I just love the aesthetic and the weapons and armor that Lonesome Road added to New Vegas. Also, the atmosphere during Lonesome Road is probably my favorite in any Fallout game, so really top notch. Now, throughout the Unexplored Mojave series, I've tried to find out the real locations of locations that we can find in the Mojave. However, Lonesome Road was a little bit more difficult because it's not necessarily based on any real locations. Many players speculate that it's just kind of west of Good Springs, but upon some further research, I started to doubt that theory, and I found a Reddit post from about 10 years ago that I think explains the situation the best. So according to the game, the Marked Men, which is the main villain that we have to fight in Lonesome Road, cut off supplies along State Route 88 and State Route 127. Now 127 is close to New Vegas, which would support the idea that it's near Good Springs. However, State Route 88 is near California, specifically close to Sacramento, making it pretty far away from New Vegas. So if we meet in the middle, that would place the divide at about Death Valley National Park which I think just adds a really cool element to this DLC. So for this video, that's the theory I'm going to run with, that the divide takes place within Death Valley. And I think that would be a pretty cool idea. So as you enter Hopeville, you're going to come across this gas station. And this gas station is actually pretty incredible. In fact, this is one of the best locations in all of Fallout. And I know what you might be saying. Otter. This is just a plain gas station. There's a hard lock safe in it, but there's nothing to see here. Well, you would be wrong. You see, this is every Fallout player's wet dream. Over 100 episodes, hundreds of hours of exploring the waste, pain, suffering, countless rads, hundreds of Kims, alcoholism, and it has all led me to this very moment in time. Here we can find the rarest item in all of Fallout New Vegas. The legendary, the magnificent, the glorious, the radioactive Nuka. Cola Quantum. Everything in Fallout has led me to this very moment, finding the only bottle of Nuka Cola Quantum in Fallout New Vegas. For whatever reason, the devs of Fallout New Vegas didn't put Nuka Cola Quantum in the game, but we can find it in this chest. There's a 10% chance that it'll spawn in that crate. If it doesn't spawn for you, you will want to reload your save when from exiting the bunker, so you'll have to go through the Ulysses conversation every single time and you will just have to keep reloading if you want to acquire it. Moving on to the Hopeville bunkers, only one of which is accessible, we have to get through a very hard locked door or a hard locked terminal. I decided to go ahead and hack the terminal since I don't usually do that and I actually quite enjoy hacking in Fallout. Now in here we can find all sorts of amazing loot, so definitely make a stop by here if you get the chance. Now, of course, we can find things like bobby pins and ammunition, which is obviously very good. But we can also find Riot Gear and Riot Gear Helmet. And the reason I like this armor a lot is it looks like the Ranger armor. However, it does not have the NCR affiliation. So when you wear it, you are still your character and people don't think you're NCR, which is really cool. Also, in a very hard locked locker... We have a Riot Gear and a Riot Shotgun that are almost in perfect condition, but it's in a very hard locked locker, so you're going to need a 100 lockpick in order to access it. And then moving up the side here to the west, we can find the Hopeville Missile Base Headquarters. We can see this overturned truck along with some more marked men, and these marked men can actually be pretty well armed. This guy had a rocket launcher, and sometimes they can even carry an anti-material rifle. So I found this DLC to be very challenging, which is kind of how I remembered it. But it's not as frustrating, I think, as the Dead Money DLC, which we did a previous video on. 
And on the top of the headquarters, we can find some ammunition boxes, some stealth boys. And then over here on this edge, we can find some whiskey bottles. So I would like to imagine that maybe workers came up here to drink long, long, long ago before obviously the Great War happened. Now one thing I really like about this DLC is in even like metal boxes and stuff, you can find pretty decent loot. As you can see in there, I found a stim pack. So I found that looting everything in the Lonesome Road DLC is worthwhile. In Dead Money, it's more out of necessity, but in this DLC, it's more out of that you could find something good or something helpful in almost any box. So you want to look through everything, and I really like that aspect of Lonesome Road. Heading into the headquarter building, we will find some more marked men one of which is armed with an anti-material rifle, this one here. So definitely, if you're doing this DLC, make sure you come prepared because these guys can mess you up if they want. I had some trouble killing this guy, but eventually we blew his leg off. And as you can see here, there's that anti-material rifle. Now, inside of the headquarters, there's not a whole lot, but we can find some Kims and some healing items. And of course, the marked men might have good weapons and ammunition on them, but not a whole lot in here, but you can kind of see that people have been mutilated inside of here. Now there is this medical bot that can help heal your limbs and restore your health, the auto dock, which is really helpful. And there's also a commissary inside to buy ammunition and mods for your weapons that you acquire during your playthrough. So pretty helpful. And there's a destroyed iBot, which will have an upgrade for Eddie. And then in this back room, we can find a locked safe, along with some Kims and some pre-war money. Now during this DLC, you can find a lot of pre-war money, which is really nice because it is worth a lot of money. As you can see there, pre-war money, along with some stim packs and a copy of today's physician. So not bad. Now in this other room, before you get to the safe room, I found this really cool light bulb. Somebody kind of jerry-rigged this light bulb and I just thought it was a really cool aesthetic for Fallout. So while we have this scenic shot of Eddie and a light bulb, let's go over some of the lore of Hopeville. So during the pre-war, Hopeville was a small town that ended up housing nuclear missiles because the United States thought it would be a good place for a base. However, the Commonwealth Defense Administration did not realize that the ground was unstable. It was geographically unstable and there were minor earthquakes. And at some point before the Great War, the U.S. Army allowed Big MT to conduct research on the city, specifically involving weather control. And leading up to the events of Fallout New Vegas, Hopeville was actually a thriving community that served as a trade post between the New California Republic and New Vegas. But that all changed when a certain courier delivered a package to the Divide. Moving on to the actual town of Hopeville, away from the military base, we can find like a main street area with several buildings and houses. However, all of this lies in ruins and kind of just pure chaos because of the massive earthquakes that occurred when the nuclear bombs were detonated underneath the city. And we'll talk more about why later in the video. At this marked man camp, we can find some really kind of like disgusting scenes of what appears to be human organs kind of sprung out around the area. Obviously, the marked men are up to some pretty bad stuff, and obviously they are a bit crazy, and that's putting it lightly. In this building over here, we can actually find the detonator to detonate some of the warheads that will help us clear a path throughout much of the divide. Inside this building, though, we can find some dead marked men that I killed, another one with an anti-material rifle, along with red glare, which is a rocket launcher that is very useful, and as I mentioned, the laser detonator, which we can use to detonate some warheads that will help us clear the way. As always, it'll be worth your time to loot through stuff as you can find weapons, grenades, ammunition, and of course, Kims and medical supplies. Again, really cool about this DLC. Now, after you pick up the laser detonator, you will get ambushed by a lot of marked men. So you'll be ready for that fight. I actually found it pretty difficult and I really enjoy the difficulty though with this DLC. 
Like I said before, it's not very much frustrating, it feels like a fair fight, unlike Dead Money, which at times feels kind of unfair. In the ground floor of this building, we can find a lot of ammunition, and then there's an Eddie poster over on this building. Of course, if you find all 20 Eddie posters, you'll get some XP. Then we can blow up this warhead, which will lead us to the next section of Hopeville. However, before we move on to the next section, I actually skipped over a part, so we wanna head back to that area, which is very easily missed. So this is the Hopeville Missile Base loading station, and we can find some trucks here. And I assume they just use this area to load off supplies and potentially nuclear missiles. This is just to the east of the Nuka-Cola Quantum gas station. And again, we can find a lot of good supplies and food. There's lots of MREs that we can find, which would be a probably decent food, especially if you're playing on hardcore difficulty. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot over here, but there are some plasma mines that are active, so be careful about that. And we can find a skeleton with a bowie knife next to it, so I wonder if somebody died trying to fight off marked men or something like that. Not sure, but some pretty cool, like, world building. And then heading towards the next section, we can find the Hopeville Men's Barracks, which of course would have been an army barracks for the men soldiers. And there will be several marked men inside, so you're going to want to make sure to kill them. And this fight can be a little bit difficult, but, you know, me and Eddie handled it pretty all right. Again, we can take some ammo and bottle caps from the guys, and then we can loot the rest of this building and get some ammunition. And there's also some weapons, like the Blade of the West, which I thought was kind of a cool weapon that the marked men sometimes carry on them. And then over here, opposite of me, we have a hard locked locker, and inside we can actually get some US Army combat armor, which is pretty decent, and it's worth a lot of caps, so a really good find. Again, if you go through this DLC, I highly recommend having a 100 lockpick. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on some pretty good loot. And then heading to the Marked Men Guard Outpost, this is the next area of Hopeville. We can find an overturned truck and, of course, more Marked Men. Now, there's not much in the overturned truck, but we can find some more army supply crates. Now, over in these buildings, this is pretty optional stuff. Like, you could easily skip it, but we can find some pretty dark stuff in here. So, of course, as always, more ammunition, more chems and medical supplies, all of that kind of good stuff. And there is an average locked metal box, but for me, it didn't have much loot that was worth a lot. And upstairs, we can just find more ammunition and some more military supply crates. Again, lots of looting to do in this DLC, so make sure you have a lot of time when you play through it, try to relax, and take your time. Now, actually, if we go around back, we can find a basement like two cellar doors. And down here we have some pretty dark stuff going on. You're gonna notice that these tables are filled with human skeletons and what appears to be human organs. So some really messed up stuff going on down here. Now for whatever reason, when we came down here, Eddie entered combat mode, but there was no enemies down here. So I'm not sure why he went berserk or why he was hostile. And there's also a copy of Tales of a Junk Town Jerky Vendor over amongst the organs. And then over by the eddy poster, we can find two skeletons hanging from the feet, and it appears that their body parts were collected in wooden crates. Now, I went over to check the refrigerators to see what was inside of them, but there was just normal food, which I wonder if there should be, like, other stuff inside of them, though, because of the messed up things happening in that basement. Now, eventually, you'll come across this marked men's supply outpost, but there's really not a whole lot over here. As you can see, there's a warhead, but upon detonating the warhead, I couldn't really find any loot that was worthwhile. Like, detonating the nuclear warhead didn't really have any amazing benefits, besides, of course, getting you the challenge of detonating all of the warheads within the divide. Inside this truck, like I said, not a whole lot, but there's some bobby pins. And bobby pins are really useful in this DLC for lock picking if you didn't bring a lot with you. But definitely before de doing this DLC, I'd highly recommend stocking up on lock picks. Now in the back of this trailer, I just found another kind of creepy scene. We have a mattress, some blood splatter, a tipped over chair, and a mop box or mop crate, which, you know, may have been used for some kind of blood. 
Kind of disturbing, kind of fits with the theme of the divide. And eventually you'll have to detonate this warhead that's in the middle of the road in order to progress the quest further. Now the fight that ensues is pretty challenging, but using a but using a red glare and an anti-material rifle and me and Eddie were able to clear it somewhat easily. However, Blister here had a lot of HP and it took a lot of rockets to bring him down. Again, I found this DLC to be really fun and really challenging, which is part of the reason why it's my favorite DLC combined with the lore and story. Now eventually you'll find this fire truck, which I thought was pretty cool. I don't know of any other fire trucks within Fallout New Vegas. And we can climb up on top of it in order to find some other parts of this building. You can find these like stone hut huts made out of like bricks or something littered around this DLC, which kind of shows the primitive nature of the marked men. And of course we can find some more ammunition. Then we can detonate this nuclear warhead and it'll take us to the next area of the divide. And that final explosion is pretty cool. Now this will lead us to the collapsed overpass tunnel, which we will cover in a future video. But for now, continuing about some of the Hopeville lore. So as I mentioned, Hopeville had a lot of nuclear missiles underneath it. And it was important for the NCR in New Vegas. Now the courier, the main character, was one of the essential people helping keep Hopeville running. He ran a lot of missions for the NCR. Eventually the NCR hired the courier to deliver a package, Eddie, to Hopeville. Unbeknownst to the NCR and to the courier, Eddie had the activation codes for the nuclear missiles in the divide and when the courier showed up, the nuclear missiles detonated and it caused massive earthquakes and created the chaos that we see now. And from what we can gather, the courier repressed these memories because of how traumatizing they were, and Ulysses is the sole survivor of the detonation. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. What do you guys think of Lonesome Road? Let me know in the comments, and if you have any recommendations for the next video, please post them in the comments section below. And as always, until next time.